Beyond the millions of deaths and the incalculable destruction, the Second World War leaves in its wake in 1945, a world wounded to the core of its humanity. It is not the first time that the denial of the democratic principles of dignity, equality, and mutual respect, and the propagation in their place through ignorance and prejudice of the doctrine of the inequality of men and races deal a blow to humanity. But it was one time too many. It was one time too many. The enormity of this moral disaster compels the international community to decide to construct the defenses of peace in the minds of men and women. UNESCO is created in response to this commitment with the aim of establishing the intellectual and moral solidarity of humanity as the basis for lasting and genuine peace. From then on, its purpose is to combat ignorance in favor of mutual understanding through education, culture, and the sciences. At this early stage, the idea of taking stock of the entire history of humanity in this same spirit takes shape. This was the first project undertaken by UNESCO and the most enduring. It would span more than half a century. Very quickly, the organization is faced with a major intellectual challenge. Should it lean towards limitless pluralism, scrutinizing all existing differences, or, on the contrary, should it emphasize the dynamic unity of the long and unique process of human civilization that took place over the centuries? Initially, the organization opted for a history of the scientific and cultural development of humanity, which led to the emergence of a preliminary consensus on shared heritage and the contribution of different cultures to the general progress of the world. From this debate emerged two key concepts that were to guide UNESCO's actions, heritage and diversity. The history to be written was supposed to present human progress as a common heritage and necessarily reveal its intrinsic diversity. In the early 1960s, the call to save the temples of Nubia and Philae, threatened by the rising waters of Lake Nasser, rendered this concept of heritage a reality and rooted it in a historical context. The World Heritage Convention, adopted in 1972, popularized this notion and celebrated the marvelous diversity of world heritage. The process of decolonization resulted in the emergence of new nations on the international scene. These new states asked that their specific histories and their contributions to our shared cultural heritage be more fully acknowledged. The acute realization of cultural identities specific to each society highlighted the need to reflect upon and perpetually forge the points of view of the peoples concerned. 
The need to respond to these legitimate aspirations confirmed the relevance of UNESCO's mission and led the organization to initiate new projects. The development of general histories of the different world regions that were most vulnerable to biased perspectives, resulting from a past marked by domination. Adopting an interdisciplinary approach, these histories gave experts of the regions concerned the opportunity to present their own perspectives on their regions and to confront the discourses of outside specialists. The first of these regional investigations was the monumental General History of Africa, completed in 1999. The work provided a platform for rigorously refuting many racial prejudices that, up until that time, impeded a fair understanding of the African continent, considered the cradle of humanity. Other regional histories were initiated on the basis of this model. History of Civilizations of Central Asia. History of Civilizations of Central Asia. General History of Latin America. General History of Latin America. General History of the Caribbean. General History of the Caribbean. And finally, the different aspects of Islamic culture. Different aspects of Islamic culture. In addition to its strictly historical contribution, this extensive work of research and new synthesis has several major consequences. In shifting the focus of research to continents whose memory was severed, scattered, or stolen, the project dramatically realigned our entire historical perspective. The project's international and cooperative character took historical inquiry away from continuing on narrow intellectual paths, hedged in by national interest or ideological bias. Finally, by portraying the real magnitude of tragedies such as the destruction of the Amerindian societies or the slave trade. This work reinforced the ethical commitment to the mandate entrusted to UNESCO in 1945, that of preventing in the future any denial of the democratic ideals of dignity, equality, and respect of humankind. In this way, there emerged a more solid foundation for dialogue between peoples and cultures, henceforth embedded in a complete and pluralist historical perspective. The histories, by virtue of their ability to help us confront the future with greater confidence, take on considerable importance in the areas of education and, by extension, civic duty. Educating the children of the world to become responsible human beings. In forging a sense of citizenship, the foundation of all sovereignties, nothing is more important than ensuring that each individual's dignity is preserved. The assumption of this interior grounding is that by educating the children of the world to become responsible human beings, an ideal expressly stated as one of the main objectives of UNESCO's constitution, the link between the past, the present, and the hopes for the future will be understood. No one can live with the history of another. No one can live with the history of another. Consequently, UNESCO is committed to the careful utilization of these histories for the education of all. The general history of Africa, for example, will be transformed into pedagogical tools, not only for the children of Africa, but also for those of Asia, Europe, and the Americas. Similarly, the other histories will serve children in other parts of the world. Each individual needs to know where he or she comes from, and in doing so learns that we belong to a world that cannot be reduced to these specific origins, or that these origins, however particular we may imagine them to be, are the result of interactions across centuries of all the diverse aspects of human history in their infinite diversity. Today, these histories have become a full-fledged part of the common heritage of humanity, an education of truth about oneself, an education of truth about oneself, that by its very nature, that by its very nature, is a lesson in solidarity with all others.